Closed captioning for The Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the taste, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. It's holiday recipe time. My mom's famous stuffing, Chef Tank and his sweet potato gnocchi, Manlio's patate gratinate. But first, here's the man with the main course. Well, as you know, Youngstown, is all about the food. And holiday time, when we're entertaining and having family and friends over, when we're serving these big holiday meals, the most important thing is the entree. Be it beef, be it the kielbasa, be it the turkey, be it the fish. I mean, the butcher is your go-to man before you start anything else. Well, I think there's no better time (laughs) to be a butcher in Northeast Ohio than during the holidays. And if you're coming to me, that means you want something to be perfect. And if you want something to be perfect, there doesn't need to be too much extra on it. You know, the simple black dress for a filet and for a prime rib is salt and pepper. Well, the beef prime rib is the fancy schmancy beef dish that I absolutely love. I gotta tell you, this is intimidating. I've never made one. I love to order it out, but I don't think this is in my skill set. You make tenderloin at home? Beef tenderloin, not afraid. super easy, right? Yeah. 400 degrees on the oven, a little bit of olive oil, that salt and pepper, right? Simple, you know you want to sear the outside and you want it to be medium rare on the inside. It's even to cook. And yes. I think because this is not like one little skinny piece, yeah. it makes it a little bit intimidating, but it's really just two different temperatures. We want to sear it on the outside, so we're going to do it real hot at first. So you want to rub this thing down. A little okay. bit of olive oil or grapeseed oil or a little bit of butter, whatever, okay? That's going to help create that sear zone and that nice crust All right. that and you love. And then the salt, the pepper, yep. and spices on top. Exactly. And what's nice about this one here is I actually cut the bone off and tied it back on. So this butcher twine is cooking twine, so you cook it oh. with it. You can sear this actually in your pan, in your roasting pan. At 450. At 450. Leave that lid off to start, okay? That first half an hour, it's gonna sear and create all those juices inside. And then you put the lid down, bring the heat down low. It'll start gradually getting down to that 350. It's gonna slow roast. You're gonna get all the tenderness flavor. You have to make sure you let it rest. For a steak, it's only like 10 to 15 minutes, okay? That you want, And don't put foil over top of it. It's resting because you want all those juices to marinate inside. Okay. For a prime rib roast, a little bit longer more like 20 minutes to about 25 minutes. You want all those juices that stay inside to be marinating themselves. Now, how do I make sure that this bird is juicy, delicious, and not ah, Great questions, right? And one is get it from us, because you, know <laughs> you know that we're gonna care about your turkey the way that it should be. Yes. And to make sure that when you're putting something out on your holiday meal, you know that you're not worrying about it. What's great about these turkeys is they're fed all naturally. So vegetarian diet, no antibiotics, they're free range, they're out there, it's natural, but they're eating good stuff. So we start with the prime bird. Now, to brine or not to brine? Great questions, right? (laughs) Or the question when it comes to the turkey. (laughs) Here's what I am with brining, okay? We do the brining here, and what the brining does to the turkey is it takes something that's already great and makes it even better. Okay, so it allows it to be foolproof so that if you overcook it a little bit, it's still gonna be nice and juicy. Now, why is that it? Okay, well, the the turkey skin, if we poked uh, holes in there, we'd be losing some juice. Yes. That's not what we wanna do. What we wanna do is influx flavor, okay? The brining, when you use apples and brown sugar like we do, and it's just a touch of salt, it helps take this and perforates the skin. So all those juices, those natural juices can go inside the turkey so that it can stay nice and juicy inside. Trust this meat thermometer, the the pop out or no, no, don't trust it. They put them in there, but you don't trust it. Yeah, and and I left it in here for this to talk about it. So the best thing to do is to get one of those good cooking thermometers, right? We sell them here, get them at Sobbles, you can get Mm. them online. There's nothing that can replicate the inside temperature of the thickest part of the meat closest to the bone. And what do we want that to be? So for poultry, you want it to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 160 to 165. How long is the rest Great, time? right? So you might be like, why are we pulling out poultry at 165? It, my cookbook tells me to be at 170, 175. 
in the next 20 minutes before this turkey actually gets cut and should be cut, it's going to finish off cooking. It's gonna raise another 10 degrees. So let the turkey rest a good 20 minutes to a half an hour depending on the size of your turkey. That way all those juices continue marinating inside the bird and when you're done, you still got that nice crispy skin. Great tips. I'm telling you, for the entree, before we begin the holiday meal, you've got to see the master. Seafood, kielbasa, all the meats, all the entrees right here. Danny, always, always good tips. Thank you. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. At r Paint, you get more than a can of paint. You get easy to apply, long-lasting, Benjamin Moore color. Get more at r Paint, Youngstown Poland Road and Struthers. Well, this is for you, Phil. Happy anniversary, Cheers. four years at the tree. So what have we learned? It's been a great journey. <laughs> what we have learned is that people want to come to celebrate here at Magic Tree. We have these beautiful signs for every occasion. And for my wife and I over the last four years, to be able to do what we've done for the community with fundraisers has been very dear to our heart. And what do you see coming up in the future? Well, we have a huge building. We have incredibly good craft beer, incredibly good food we make from scratch, and our wine on tap. We have something for everybody here at Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. I want everyone to come down and let us create a memory for them. That's right, and I love that they have the trays to go. Party, pick it up, take it to the office, take it at home, and you can party at the tree no matter That's where right. you are. Congratulations. Good Cheers. job. Part of growing up in Youngstown is growing up with Rolly Brothers Markets. Even friends who have moved out of town come to shop and say hi when they're home for a visit. And my family has always shopped at Rolly's, and today they are still my favorite grocery store. My recipes depend on the best ingredients, and that's why I get them at Rolly's, where you'll always find the freshest food at the best prices. Rooley Brothers is a proud sponsor of the KC Malone Show. The quality that customers have come to expect is true local flavor. Hurry into a Spitzer location near you to enjoy the lowest prices of the year on some of our best-selling 2016 models. You can save thousands on your new vehicle with the Spitzer Model Year on Sales event. Spitzer, saving you more since 1904. Well, when I put out the call for an interesting holiday side dish, I knew that Tank, the executive chef here at Magic Tree Pub and Eatery, would rise to the occasion. So he calls back and says, yeah, how about some sweet potato gnocchi? I'm thinking, that is amazing. And you said it's really easy, Tank. It's incredibly simple. Um, it's five ingredients, and we're good. You know what I mean? There's nothing to it. Um, and that's a really an interesting starch. Now, why a sweet potato as opposed to a yam? You could do either, I suppose. Uh, sweet potatoes tend to be a little wetter, a little sweeter. Yams tend to be a little more starchy, a little drier, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could do it either way. Um, if you prefer yams over sweet potatoes, most of the time in the store, you find sweet potatoes. Even yams are, are sweet potatoes. Exactly. So, and, you know, these really are low in calories. I mean, these yep. are really healthy for you. Yeah, they're not the better foods. Sure. Okay, so... How did you get the sweet potato to this consistency? What did well, you do? Well, first we roasted it for about, I want to say about an hour, um, scraped them out of the skins, and then riced it so that it was nice and smooth, there was no pieces, there was no strings. All right, and this is how many? Uh, I think that was two. Okay, so. About a cup. Give put it take. in the bowl? Yep, do it. All right, in the bowl it goes. And then we have uh, about two cups of all-purpose flour. Mm-hmm. One and a half eggs. I did one whole egg and then an egg white. An egg white, okay. okay. Give some white pepper. Interesting. Okay, so that's one, two, salt. three. And then four. I have some brown sugar. If you want it a little sweeter, throw in the brown sugar. If you don't, don't worry about it. So we're gonna throw in, we'll call that a tablespoon. Okay. <laughs> Looks good to me. My mother never measured, why should I? 
and literally just mix it up. That's it. And then literally roll out tubes. That's it. Take a handful, roll them out. Cut them to size. All of them? And about half. Okay. Now, how long do these have to boil, Tank? About three and a half minutes. That's all you need. Okay, so you have the brown butter as your base. Right. A little bit of uh, shallot. Okay. I'm going to let the shallot go kind of clear. And then, how do you brown the butter? How do you make brown butter? The easiest way to do it is very low, very slow. Um, put some butter in a pan, super low heat if you can. It works really well if you put a cast iron pan underneath it and then set a pan on, on top of it. Okay. Kind of evens the heat out a little bit and you just want it to go real slow. Start to turn brown. If you get black specks in it, start over. And you know, it's Thanksgiving, you don't want to skimp, so, you know. No, thank you. Hit it with the brown Christmas. butter. No, 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 don't Whatever, be scared. man. Don't yeah. be scared. And that's it. A little bit of parsley, a little bit of pecorino romano, and now all you need is a fork. Mmm, yeah. that's nice. They're like little Different sweet, sweet potatoes. potato pillows. That shows up. Different sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, I know you were so busy, and that is why we invaded your kitchen, and I really, really appreciate it. This is outstanding. <laughs> Go to my website, and you are going to find the recipe. CaseyMaloneShow.com. Look for Tank's Sweet Potato Gnocchi. You are going to dazzle on this holiday season. Thank you. These are amazing. I'm glad Delicious. you like Delicious. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hi everybody, I'm Danny, owner and operator of Cthulhu Prime Meats, the third generation butcher shop that not only specializes in quality, but also in customer service and doing things in a new technological way. Chris here is our customer service manager. Chris, what do you think that we do differently than any other grocery store? I think we personally not only offer great product, but we can offer a great customer service experience as well. We try and treat all our customers like they were family and friends, ask how their family is doing just so they can keep in touch, and give them that customer experience that they deserve. And the nice part is we not only do that inside the store, but also on CthulhuPrimeats.com, where you can buy a lot of our products that we carry here, whether it be grass-fed beef, organic chicken, some of our specialty burgers and bacon. Those are wonderful, and we're going to provide that same customer experience online as we do in-store. Come see us in-store or online. Make your next meal one to remember. Cerny means trucks. For over 50 years, the Cerny family has been the area's leader for medium and heavy-duty international trucks. New or pre-owned, Cerny means trucks. Easy to find. Cerny Motors is conveniently located at Route 46 and 80. At Cerny Motors, no job is too big or too small. Cerny Motors service will keep you on the road. For service, parts, sales, lease, or rental, Cerny means trucks. Hurry into a Spitzer location near you to enjoy the lowest prices of the year on some of our best-selling 2016 models. You can save thousands on your new vehicle with the Spitzer Model Year End Sales Event. Spitzer, saving you more since 1904. Well, for a little taste of Italy in your holiday meal, I came to the expert, Chef Monleo Anzalone here at Woolley Brothers West in Austin Town. And I called Monleo and I said, what do you think would be a nice, you know, side dish for your entertaining uh, during the holidays? And he said, I got the perfect dish. And it sounded so good. Thank you. Now let me see if I'm getting this correctly uh, pronunciated. It is patate, Gratinate. Beautiful. Yeah, oh yeah, just like that. <laughs> little potatoes, little garlic, little cheese, mm, some pan herbs. Pancetta. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it sounds <laughs> so good. So, uh, Manlio, you are going to uh, walk us through the steps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do um, get your five, six large potatoes by this size. You okay. Know, peel them and cut them thin. You don't want it too thin, because otherwise they're going to turn too hard. You know what I mean? And I saw you had that in water, so always just leaving yes. your potatoes in yes. water is yes. the way to keep no way. them from browning. Uh-huh, we'll make that mistake now. So. Right, then we're going to add a little bit of garlic. 
Mmm, can't, can't go wrong with the garlic. Fresh, I always like to do a fresh stuff. A little bit of fresh rosemary. Okay, chopped mm -hmm. up, smells chopped good. Up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A little bit of sea salt. Mm -hmm. I like to cook with sea salt or kosher salt. I love the texture of that, you know? I love the flavor. Okay. All right. A little bit of black pepper. A little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil. oil. Yeah. I'm gonna spray a little bit so it doesn't stick the bottom. Spread them up and nice, make sure they don't overlap, you know. And then we get the pancetta I was talking before. Oh, I love the flavor of pancetta. And we're gonna go in the oven for like an hour on 475 degrees. Now through the magic of television, Monlingo, you already had... Okay, so after one hour, what so, is this going to look so like? After one hour, this is what it's going to look like. With potatoes. Oh, cooked, okay. And, you know, uh, nice and moist like I was telling. And yeah. With a uh, pancetta crispy. Mm -hmm. crispy like this. We're going to finish, finish him with a little bit of a uh, panko breadcrumb, which is makes nice and crispy. So just a light sprinkling. Just a light sprinkling. You don't want to... Yeah, you know. And just a little bit of Romano cheese. After. So this goes back in. This goes back in for another 10 minutes. That's it, just 10 That's minutes. It, 10 minutes. That's it. On um, 475 steel. And when okay. it comes up, it will look like this. Oh, we yeah, look that's at finished. That. <laughs> that is beautiful. Wow. I am dying to try this. Now, Manlio, do you recommend serving this in a bowl or on like a platter to I keep them do, nice and I flat? I would do on a platter yeah, to keep it nice and flat like that. I mean, this is really different. I, I know. Look at that, Bill. And here we go, Bill. That's for you. <laughs> now, Leo, I'm going to take this recipe, and it is going to be available on my website, kcmalonshow.com. I, I love that. Thank you. And you are here, and you uh, help everybody with their holiday cooking, don't That's you? That's right. If you have any questions, just up here, Wooly Brothers, and I'll be happy to answer them. There's a new standard in assisted living. One that combines comfort, luxury, convenience, and the highest quality expert care. Your loved ones can experience it now in Canfield's premier senior living location. The Inn at Ironwood offers fine dining and amenities such as a concierge, salon, housekeeping, and laundry services. And a truly elegant setting in Canfield. Call us for more information or visit us and take a tour. The Inn at Ironwood, Canfield's premier senior living location. Every year, at the same time, the air gets a little colder, the faces get a little warmer, and family gets a little closer. Everything seems to slow down, and what matters most is suddenly much easier to see. Pioneer Trails Tree Farm, providing farm fresh Christmas trees for over 30 years. Continue your family tradition at Pioneer Trails Tree Farm. All day, you pursue your dreams. And all day, I pursue mine. Knowing we are always there for each other. You are my best friend, my true love. Together, we shine twice as bright. The Everest Two Stone Collection. Forever mark. A diamond is forever. Available at Kamara Jewelers. Growing up, one of my favorite dishes for the holidays was the green bean casserole with mushroom soup. But now, I would be embarrassed to serve it. What, you, you drain a can of green beans, add mushroom soup, some canned onion rings, and then you throw it in the oven. But I love the taste of that. So what I've done is went through all these different recipes and combined what I like the best. It's fresh green beans, I'm still using the mushroom soup, but I'm adding more fresh mushrooms and I'm going to make my own crisp 
onions. You are going to love this dish. Ingredients you'll need for this recipe, starting with the crispy onion rings. Two medium onions, thinly sliced, one quarter cup all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of panko breadcrumbs, and one teaspoon of kosher salt. For the green bean casserole, you'll need two tablespoons of unsalted butter, three garlic cloves minced, one medium onion, finely diced, eight to 12 ounces of sliced button mushrooms, one pound of fresh green beans, three cups of chicken stock, one 10 ounce can of cream of mushroom soup, two tablespoons of grated Romano cheese, half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. So I have two medium onions that I've sliced thin. I'm going to add the salt and just draw out a little bit of the water. You know, no egg wash or milk or anything like that. And then I'm going to add the flour and the panko breadcrumbs. I'll tell you, these panko breadcrumbs are amazing. So now we're gonna mix these all together. I've preheated the oven to 475 and it'll be 30 minutes in the 475 oven, middle rack, and then two or three times during that half hour, just check on it, move them around to make sure they're baking evenly. While I'm waiting for the onions to crisp up in the oven, I have added the three cups of chicken stock and the green beans to this pot and I'm gonna wait for it to boil and then I'm gonna boil them for five to seven minutes until they're crisp tender. Meanwhile, in this skillet, I am going to take the two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to melt it down. So we'll add the mushrooms. You can always add more mushrooms because they do cook down. And it is a green bean mushroom casserole. So I went a little over. I went almost a pound. That's about 16 ounces of mushrooms. Well, the onions and the mushrooms are nice and softened. So now I'm going to add the garlic. So we don't want that garlic to burn. And then we're just gonna cook this for about two minutes more and make sure we thoroughly combine this. Now I went almost 30 minutes on the onions, but I like mine really tarred. You can go about 15 or 20. Keep an eye on them if you don't want them quite this charred. All right, so I have drained the beans. They're crisp tender. And then just in case I need to loosen it up, I saved a little bit of the broth that it was cooked in. So I have the onion mushroom mixture with the garlic. So in this bowl, I am going to combine all of that. And I still think there's nothing better than the original, the cream of mushroom soup. You can go low sodium. They have a flavor now with roasted garlic. You know, you can have different variations, but I am going with the original. And then, kick it up a notch, I add the two tablespoons of grated Romano cheese. Just to add a little bit, oh, about a half teaspoon of salt. I'm using some sea salt. And then a few grinds of fresh ground black pepper. And now I'm going to add this into the pan before we put it in the oven. Look at all that. Doesn't that just remind you of your childhood? I am going to add my onion crisps to the top. We are going to put these in the oven. Let it get a little bubbly, warmed all the way through. It won't be more than 10 or 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on it, okay? Middle rack. Well, while we've got the beans baking in the oven, all hail the queen. <laughs> yes, I'm... the queen of stuffing is here and she's actually going to help me prepare this. Now, we've probably made this two or three times already. I know. But you cannot I am stuffed out on the best. Yes. For this recipe, you'll need a 16 ounce bag of seasoned bread cubes, two sticks of butter, four medium onions chopped, one half bunch of celery chopped, two cups of chicken broth or stock, one pound of sage sausage, one cup of chopped Italian flat leaf parsley, two eggs, and salt and pepper to taste. Not that we're doing a personal endorsement, but you usually like to get the Bob Evans. Correct? I do, I do. And I very rarely get any fat out of it. Okay, so we don't have to worry about draining it, but no. sage is important. So this takes a very little bit of time and we'll just brown this and set that aside and then we'll work on the uh, what onions and the celery. Onions and the celery. Now that the butter has melted we will add um, the uh, green onions, yellow onions I should say, and the celery and we'll let this brown until it's just a little bit the onions and the translucent because it'll cook the rest of the time. 
in the oven. All right, we already have the sausage cooled at the bottom of our mix bowl. And let's add, let's add the, the, the bread, uh, cubes. bread cubes so that um, this will cool it off. Because if we put everything in, the eggs will We curdle. don't want them to no. curdle. Okay, no. so now you want to add that and I'll start mixing this around off. Nice. Ooh. Doing a very good job. Well, it's cooled down quite a bit, Kate, so we can add the eggs. Okay. But the egg is a very nice binder and it really helps when you bake it, it really helps to make them crispy yeah. because everybody wants the crunchy top. And now what we're going to do is put it in muffin tins for individual service. So everybody gets crispy. That's right, everybody gets a crispy top and it really is going to help with the bake time. And remember, these aren't gonna expand like a cupcake. So you can really fill them up. The oven is at 350, I'm gonna throw these in for about 20 minutes, but keep an eye on them. We like them really crispy. So if they don't but move along. Vary. Yeah, and then uh, more or less, depending on how you like your top. Well, Casey, they look beautiful. They do, you know, we are so hip. I know, and this everybody. This holiday season, we're all gonna get like a personal stuff. That's right, that's right. And it really cooked so much quicker. This Well, oh, how is this batch, Jelaine? It is fabulous. Mm. Stella, you did it again. What do you think about my upgrade of the oh. classic green beans with mushroom soup? It's wonderful. Go to my website. You are going to love these and thank me later. Thanks. Happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Love you. Love you. Mwah. Cheers. My show is always on. Watch previous segments at CaseyMaloneShow.com. Sponsored by the Ingram Law Office. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.